Late in 1941, the industry suffered a big setback when the Pacific War brought the Japanese to the Philippines. Film equipment was commandeered by the invaders for their own propaganda purposes. Some filmmakers were recruited into the invaders' propaganda units. When movie making ground to a halt, stage shows featuring big name stars took over the movie houses in Manila. These kept audiences from forgetting their favorite stars. The ruins of war were still being cleared, but the film industry in 1946 was already producing stories about invaders and their collaborators who met their comeuppance from people they had oppressed. In the decade of the 1950s, the film industry began turning out its first harvest of distinguished films. At this time, the industry operated under the studio system. There were three major studios, and each one had its own set of stars and directors, each one engaged in long-range planning with movie projects lined up for the entire year. The system assured moviegoers a variety of fare during the year, allowing stars and directors more room for their skills and talents to develop. The institution of awards during the 1950s stimulated consciousness of film as art. First, the Manila Times Publishing Company set up the Maria Clara Awards in 1950. Two years later, the Farmers Award was founded, and it has since been accepted by the industry as the most popular award-giving body in the country. Para 
Won by Filipino films at the Asian Film Festival, established for the Philippines a reputation of being an important Asian filmmaking center. It was here that filmmakers Gerardo de Leon, Lamberto V. Avellana, and Gregorio Fernandez gave notice to the world that the Filipino film had come of age. Social unrest was on the rise in the 1960s. Nationalist youth activists were calling for structural changes in Philippine society. The studios were phasing out, and a new generation of film producers were coming in. Independent producers made movies on a per-project basis. Under their system, playing it safe was the guiding rule, and exploitation films was the safest way of ensuring a quick return on one's investment. Bomba was actually melodrama heavily laced with sex. Bomba films, with their disdain for conventional society and establishment values, seem to echo the cry in the streets for social changes. Action movies about cowboy and secret agents depicted a society ravaged by criminality and corruption, searching for heroes who would rid the community of hated warlords, avaricious bureaucrats, and money-crazed businessmen. Idol movies were youth films that capitalized on the fanaticism of movie fans. At a time when adults seemed unable to merit love and respect, idol movies reflected young people's search for role models with which they could identify. Slapstick comedies featured social misfits and outcasts. As though to chide those claiming to represent normal people, they easily outwit their tormentors. Anything you want, Coca-Cola, Cerveza Negra, Limonada, Ipur ka. Hmm? Talagang malala ng sira ng ulo mo ah. Ayaw pang lumabas to kung hindi glory ang tawag sa kanya. Baka matuktukan ko yung ulo mo dyan, nakita mo. At bakit? Kaya ganda-ganda pagin ka ng glory. Glory of the sunshine. Glory of the flowers. <laughs> Ay, nakakakilit ni. Glory of the everlasting sunset. Ay, naku, napaka-romantic kung pakinggan sa bamba ng tenga kung nananabit sa pag -i. A perennial form in the industry is the movie featuring popular child stars in comic or melodramatic situations. The child is an outsider to adult society. Its glorification was another way of denouncing adult corruption and stupidity. <laughs> 